Hey everybody, welcome to Halo RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd and back for another season coming in just under 5,300 pounds. The ultra popular and exceptionally well executed 246 RKS Freedom Express by Coachman. <sighs> Running out of air, that's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> so this camper brings uh, an, an amazing blend of things. We have a carpetless, ventless floor plan. We have an awesome picture window off the door side of it. It has surprisingly good travel access, and if you stay tuned in this video, I'm gonna close the slide and give you a little pro tip that I've picked up over the years, a way that you can actually have even better traveling access on this. It has, uh, now for 22, Freedom Expresses have double Asdell sidewall construction. We have uh, aluminum framed uh, vacuum laminated walls and floor that a lot of people like because it keeps it strong and lightweight over the years. But a couple of things I personally like out of this. One of my very favorites is that it has a taller interior. Almost every ultralight out there has a six and a half foot sidewall. This is six nine all the way across in the ceiling, which means if you're tall like me, you can stand in the shower. And they nailed it by pairing that up with a longer true queen bed up front. This is one of, I consider it one of those like penultimate half ton couples campers right here. But with the sleeper sofa and dinette, Nothing says you couldn't have like a grandkid or a guest over for a weekend and they'll be comfortable enough to stay but not so comfortable that they want to stay with you another weekend, if you know what I mean. <laughs> now I, I guess I need to clarify something before I get too far along because I've learned there's a lot of people that watch my videos just waiting for me to slip up so they can point it out, which actually I don't mind. Uh, because if I say something that's not correct, I want to be corrected so that I'm putting good information out to people. So, frankly, thank you. Uh, this, I, I mentioned this is carpetless. It is carpetless flooring. There is technically a, uh, a bit of carpet under the slide where we're actually sitting right now. This is your view from the sofa, mind you. It's a very socially focused floor plan. You're like, you're right here in the mix. Mr. Brandon Carr walking through. Halet RV salesman has no clue he was just on camera. I'm going to have to advise him he's not wearing his mask correctly, but he was also not near people, so it doesn't matter. I just like to give him a hard time. Kind of like, I think, sometimes the folks that point out things I say incorrectly. I don't think that they're necessarily trying to do it uh, to, to be malicious. I think they're just pointing it out. Now, that TV can pivot far more than that. I have that barely turned right now, just to kind of showcase the fact that you can spin it around. And you see that we've got that awesome door side picture window there and a full viewing window in the entry door next to that optional uh, 12 volt DC compressor fridge right there. So this floor plane standard has an eight cubic foot gas electric. We've got it outfitted with the larger 12 volt. And in case you haven't seen any of our other uh, Freedom Express videos, first of all, you need to subscribe so you can catch those when they come out. Uh, secondly, they've gone to a very different decor here which at a glance on this floor plan, since we're staring back at the kitchen, it's, it feels like, holy cow, that's very dark and impressive. It has some very nice light accents to kind of break that up a little bit. I'm, I'm a fan. I was a little nervous when it first came out. I very quickly became a fan of this right here. Like the, the tabletop, the countertop, the little side stands by the sofa. I think they all have a nice, rich kind of warm tone to them right here. But this is a rear kitchen. And the way that they accomplish this it's a little bit different. Because at a glance right here, like you look at that cabinet up top, you look at some of the space below this stone cast sink, which is 500 degree rated, by the way. That is something that has made a nice return to the Freedom Express series that was gone previously. They swapped to stainless, which I think is great. But uh, stone cast, 500 degree rated, can't rust because it ain't, you know, it ain't metallic, basically. And of course, the Freedom Express utensil drawer. But if you're just looking over here, the kitchen feels a little bit lacking. And I think Freedom Express agrees. And they, they did this very crafty thing where they actually include part of the slide into what I consider the kitchen because really, that's sort of like your pantry space right there. We have the utensil drawer, but you still need uh, like a place for spatulas or some, some a deck of cards or whatnot. It's just really smart how they put that together, I think. So, it's a little different, but this one, she moves in mysterious ways. Uh, which, if you caught the YouTube reference I threw down right there, it's alright. It's alright. It's alright. <laughs> I don't even really like YouTube. It just works. Now, I'm not trying to start a fight with that statement. I have absolutely no business 
criticizing anyone else's musical taste with this stuff. I mean, I grew up listening, you know, when I was in... The best music you think you're ever going to listen to in your life, you listen to in high school, right? Well, I grew up listening to, like, 90s grunge, which, I mean, if we're going to be honest, a lot of it was just trash, but it was fun. <laughs> now, talking about, you know, our musical preferences aside... We've jumped forward in that slide, all the way to the front of the slide right here. It's just kind of a tricky spot for me to get to otherwise, to show you this big extra closet right here. Uh, I guess you could call that dresser shelving. And then down here, ladies, you already know what this is, right? It is, of course, the husband timeout seat. If we start thinking beyond our pay grade, or if you're like, trying to finish up dinner or you're trying to get around to leave and we keep bothering you you tell us sit down stay there and we'll yes dear and this is probably the best part of the camper right here well what's kind of cool remember that little pantry space that we saw in the kitchen they don't do drawers on this side but it is it, it does give the living room at least like a symmetrical kind of look and feel and did you notice how we have what I call the simulated cinema seat right here. Now, a lot of people are going to ask, ooh, I like this. I want to build it with a theater seat. Can you get me one of those? And the answer, unfortunately, is no, absolutely not. Because what isn't always as obvious at a glance is this is the bottom of the slide, not the floor. A theater seat needs to go all the way to the floor to floor flush slide. One of the things in this RV is that it is one of the smaller Freedom Expresses. It rides on a smaller chassis. That means the wheel wells are actually sticking up here a little bit. This is helping cover that. So if you put a theater seat in this, like you could probably physically mount one in that slide. Your head is going to be almost touching the slide ceiling up here. And your feet are going to be <laughs> dangling uh, off of that thing like the back seat of your daddy's student biker. And by the way, those are powered cup holders? <laughs> what now? Um, <laughs> they, uh... They have uh, USB outlets in them and little uh, LED lights. So just a neat little place to be able to sit there and keep your phone charged up, I think. Now, um, it's a couple's rig, but this actually has pretty good guest sleeping. We see we got the blackout kind of shades. This sofa folds down to like, uh, I think it's like 64, 65 inches long. And then over here on the dinette, this is actually a slightly wider than the average bear dinette. It's not a full-on U dinette where it's like seven foot long, but it was, uh, what was it, like 74 inches long, something like that? Not bad, you know, not bad. Uh, I think that if you're, you're planning to regularly sleep people bigger than that, you probably may consider a bunkhouse like a 257 or 287 Freedom Express. Remember I said that TV can pivot around? One more thing here. I'm going to set back into the theater seat. We kind of started here. Well, I'm sorry. Cinema seat, whatever. Sofa. This is where you're at right here. And you can see. Oops, sorry. I'm dropping stuff next to me. Pardon the camera lurch right there. It's not bad. It's not bad. It is up high. If someone says, ah, oh, that's a neck wrecker. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to argue. I I, I, I I can acknowledge. I can see that. And there's a good look at that wheel well I was talking about. That little critter right there, that's one of the reasons that we're not able to put a theater seat in this one. If we could, I would, guys. Now, you notice we have that full privacy curtain we pull across the front there. Now, if it's backlit, you can uh, uh, do a little bit of my, uh, my, the name of my favorite metal band, Shadow Puppet Theater. Uh, you know, short of that. If we're, if we're going to church it up a little bit, we could call it Silhouettes. But, uh, you know, you get the idea. Um, locking bathroom door. Little details sometimes make some nice differences. In here, we've got ourselves a porcelain foot flush stool with some awesome elbow room. Not just leg room. Good, fluffy, friendly elbow room. Nice countertop space beside the sink as well. And as we pivot around here, one of the other things I really like about Freedom Expresses is that taller ceiling giving us that taller shower space. And the bathroom feels bigger this year because they've gone away from a clouded glass door to a clear glass door. And I got a pro tip for you on that. These things are great because they take the smallest room in the camper and make it look and feel bigger, which is really nice. But these clear shower doors, oh, they streak and they spot up something fierce. Uh, especially because, I mean, I don't know about you. When's the last time you went to a campground that just had really nicely treated water? <laughs> yeah, you didn't. <laughs> You've never been there. 
Well, there's two things here. One, simple answer, get a squeegee. When you're done shower, just <laughs> clean that thing right down. It'll it'll look great. Another option though, Rainex. One of our viewers threw that idea at me and I was like, that's absolutely brilliant. But I wanna mention, you make sure you use, there's actually like shower glass indoor use Rainex because the stuff that goes on your windshield Oh, that is like fumigation city, brother. And if you're going to use that stuff in here, you better have the fan on, the windows open. You better be uh, waving your, your hand in front of your face to get some airflow like it's, well, aftermath of Taco Tuesday. Now, moving forward, we begin with that 60 by 80 true queen easy walk around bed here. And you've got that, uh, you've got side breeze windows. You have a vent above the bed. The windshield and the mirrored uh, wardrobes, they all make everything look a little bit bigger. And I like how you have normal full storage for, you know, a common travel trailer. You've got that full overhead. You've got those nice deep closets. But this one brings with it another special surprise. They call it their vaulted bed system. I think anybody and their, their brother, that to me... That's like a Murphy bed. I just don't think Freedom Express realizes they made a really good Murphy bed that works on a bullet nose shaped trailer, which is hard to do. You've got both of these uh, benches under here are dresser drawer storage. There's also a little shoe garage down there. Nice open pocket in the middle. But here's the thing I was thinking about. Those dressers, those are rated for you to be able to sit on those. So if you get a small little portable table during the day, you could actually convert this into like a little miniature office space. And of course, I like to close the slides up to show you how these work in road mode. Now we're standing at the entry door. The refrigerator's obviously to our left. Uh, that's that's a no-brainer. Sink, kitchen space, like it's, it's very, I can stop and make a sandwich friendly. So what about the bedroom and bathroom? Because with that long slide, it can kind of be problematic. That is one of the cool little magic things about this floor plan. The things that shouldn't work but do work. It takes a sideways travel trailer two-step, but you can uh, boogie your way right up here to the bedroom. And I wanna show you, here's a killer pro tip on this floor plan. Before you close the slide, open the bathroom door all the way. Now, when you do that, you need to make sure you secure it and you lock it back somehow. However you decide to do that, just make sure you can do it. Because if you don't, you pretty much cannot get into the bathroom. But if you remember to do it and you secure it, you will have, I think, total turtle access to this floor plan. Now, when we get an RV, sort of like a boat, it just feels like good luck to give her a name. And I wonder, what would you name this one? Because I'm going to call it Dusty, in case you're wondering why. Well, that's why. <laughs> Now, pardon my battery box up here on the uh, the battery tray, appropriately enough. There is room for dual batteries up here. We include your first at no additional charge uh, on top of our sale price from Helid RV. And you notice they put the spare tire up front. Couple reasons. That leaves the rear bumper wide open, should you choose to add something like a, a little accessory bike rack or something like that. Although, keep in mind, the bean counters tell you don't do that for warranty reasons, but you know, years two, three, and four on a used RV, you never would have thought twice about it, but on a new RV, it feels different somehow. I understand that. Um, it also helps with load equalization. Now that sticker right there, that is where you could mount a solar charge controller should you utilize the roof solar prep on this. You might have noticed you have a full uh, pass-through, uh, like basically like an awning light in there. It's funny how simple it is, but just how well it works so you get lighting through the entire pass-through instead of only on one side or the other. Uh, the other thing, you saw that outdoor picnic table, a uh, little storage location. But before we get there, I want to show you one of the most easily missed and I think one of the smartest, coolest little new for 22 features. This. It is a magnet holdback, but it actually has like a latch so that it doesn't go falling on your head. Sometimes it doesn't have to be fancy. Sometimes it just has to work. So we saw where that picnic table can be stowed. And that's a great place to put it right over here, right next to that uh, factory standard little griddle camp cooker situation. And this RV, I've always thought has a really good like campsite sort of feel and function to it. There's a lot of RVs that there's like a big thing. There's stuff eating up the awning space. This is just a wide open awning. 
and just the way the windows and the baggage doors lined up they really had a lot of room to maximize that this is also a really good angle to take a look at those wide stance stability axles down there uh those things uh those are the kind of things i wish uh, i had after i had a couple barley pops because they will take the uh the uh, so much of the sway and the wiggle and the jiggle and instability out of the moving experience it's not even funny they're one of the things that really makes this an excellent option for half tons not just the weight not just the length but those wide stance axles are fantastic now over here in the history of freedom express there used to be a uh, a pull out coleman camp grill that came with this uh, as an option anyway, but with the griddle station, they didn't do that anymore. They said, you know what? We don't want to waste that. Our floor plan's already engineered for that pocket below the refrigerator. Why, why waste it? So they turned it into a handy little drawer, a little picnic table drawer, place to keep like, uh, I don't know, some salt shakers or something like, like, what would you put in there? What would you use it for? I love knowing that stuff. I love hearing how people would move into their RVs because frankly, what I'm doing guys, I'm, uh, I'm trolling for ideas for my own camper when I ask you half those questions. <laughs> Notice the roof ladder. A lot of companies have either stopped offering roof ladders or just have not been able to get a hold of them. Apparently Freedom Express has a little more clout uh, they are continuing to put a standard roof ladder on their uh, ultralight series here. And it's the little things like this on a Freedom Express. All the hookups back in the in, in what I call the correct corner. The, uh, the driver's side corner. Because that right here, this is where the park hookups are usually located. At least at, at most campsites. Now, if you remember years past with this floor plan, uh, there was a time that this thing weighed barely 3,800 pounds. Well, it was shorter, it, was, uh, it didn't have quite the ceiling height, but it also didn't have quite the structure this has. In, uh, like if you look at like the 2010 and 11 era for this floor plan, the bottom of that slide out would always have like a diagonal stress fracture. They got rid of that. But to, to, to get rid of that, they had to bulk up some structure and that is part of the reason, it's one of several reasons, that this has gained a little bit of weight over the years, but considering we're still nicely in that half ton towable range, I don't really know that they have uh, added so much weight that it becomes a detrimental factor. And that beautiful three-quarter nose cap and that inset windshield right there, it, I mean, it opens that bedroom right up. And considering, remember, when you're sitting on the sofa, you can kind of see out the front of the RV. It just makes the whole RV look and feel a little bit bigger. I really, really like it. This is also one of the floor plans that did not used to have a heated underbelly. It was enclosed, but now it is both. A little bit of a funny story. I was up on top of, actually it was another Freedom Express just the other day that just came in, and uh, my dad was driving by, and he stopped and swung in and he yells out his window, hey, what'd I tell you about getting high on them campers out there? So if you ever wonder where my sense of humor comes from wonder no longer i came by it honestly that apple fell straight down the tree <laughs> what i wanted to show you though making sure i don't fall off the side of this is the fact that we do have a fully walkable roof we've got roof solar prep up here it also has roof attic vents which uh, are the little black hockey puck thing that you're looking at kind of in the middle of the roof there. What that's gonna let you do is all the heat that builds up in the structure the, of the, the roofing itself and like between the ceiling and the roof decking, it'll allow that to breathe out. And that along with the polar white exterior on this does a fantastic job of keeping the heat down. Now, for aesthetic reasons, they've gone with a black AC shroud. I would kind of prefer a white but I've yet to have one customer ever tell me it was after I changed from a black to a white AC shroud, that was the only way I could stand to go through the summer. I think your air conditioner will still keep up. I think it just means sometimes your AC has to run a few minutes longer. Maybe I make a bigger deal out of it than it has to be, but I tend to be a very function over fashion guy. So this is something that I look for and I'm, I'm just kind of, I always am curious to know, what, what do people think about that? Especially with a full white exterior. I don't think a, ba uh, a white roof fixture would look bad on this whatsoever, do you? So let me know what you think about it. Remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees and we just do everything else. So when you're ready, we're ready at Haylet RV. We're family owned and operated. Been doing this since 1989 and we just keep on trucking. Thank you so much for your support. So if you haven't done so, take a moment, leave me a couple comments, maybe hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, I'm Josh, the RV nerd. This is, uh, almost, I got my names mixed up. Haylet RV. Whew, I've been doing a lot of videos. Stuff gets blurry. Whatever. Just have a great day, guys. <laughs>